Conservation isn't just setting aside areas and preserving them, keeping people out, dividing human from nature. Conservation really is about how we perpetuate the use of the very resources we're, we're conserving. The term comes initially from holding water back behind dams during the spring flood season. So during the dry summer, we'd have water to release to grow crops. We conserve wildlife, we get some level of protection in order to access it later on, to use it later on. We invest largely to keep our sport alive, to keep our passions in flame, to keep this activity we so treasure and value and identify with available to us and our loved ones long into the future. As wildlife managers, we work at a population level, trying to conserve populations into the future versus an individual animal. The most important thing we can do into the future is conserve habitat. There are threats to habitat, be it subdivision development, be it energy development. Those things can be done right and with an eye to the future, but we need to consider those things. We've learned a lesson over and over that if you don't control some of these populations, they will degrade their habitat enough that it will be a long-term degradation that will take decades to ever recover if it does. You want to take care of the habitat. You know that's the driver of all things good and healthy beyond that. And so that's, that's the fundamental issue right there. All of that has to be based on science. We can't have too many and we don't want to kill too many. And I think that the history has shown that we've done a pretty good job as wildlife managers over the last hundred years. It becomes part of your ethic. It becomes part of your creed. If I truly am a hunter and I'm dependent upon robust landscapes, for my food and my life, I better do something to put more back into that landscape. If I go to my grave and there's some species that's not on this landscape, when I go to my grave, we've failed. I want there to be more species. I want there to be greater variety and greater abundance of species. If we start fragmenting wildlife habitat, types to the point where an elk herd cannot be sustained anymore, white-tailed deer populations can't be sustained anymore, then chances are the quality of life for humans in that area can't be sustained that well anymore either. It's important to maintain wildlife habitat because that's a quality of life that, that counts for humans also. I think humans innately have a need for that connection with the outside. We have not been civilized for all that long, the blink of an eye. And that's why people have plants in their house. That's why people have pets. It fills a part of our soul that we can't live without. The funding for the people, the professionals that work on the ground to collect the data, to put the data together, comes from hunters, hunters' dollars, not state tax money at all. It comes from hunting licenses, elk tags, deer tags, those kind of things. That's the funding source for everything we do. Conservation and the elk recovery did not come easily. Scientists have had much to learn about the animal's biology, population dynamics, habitat needs, relations with predators, and the response to hunting. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, every year nearly 220 million is distributed from the federal taxes associated with hunting to support wildlife management programs. The purchase of lands for habitat conservation and hunter education and safety classes and another 760 million come from the Pittman-Robertson excise tax on guns and ammunition. As a result, in 2014, the United States Fish and Wildlife distributed a total of 1.1 billion in excise tax revenues paid by sportsmen and sportswomen to fund the fish and wildlife conservation and recreation projects across the nation. Those numbers are making a difference. Hunter conservation groups are also working on the front line to preserve wild lands. The total value of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation's conservation work now exceeds $1 billion. 
We have over 200,000 people that I think they have a strong interest in the habitat that we can serve and enhance out there, and they put their money uh, into it by their support of our organization. So there's, there's a lot of other uh, hunter-based conservation groups out there where people are doing the same thing.